Hello, everyone. Seeing you slowly come into the room. Awesome. Hi, uh, we'll go ahead and get started in just a second once um, the attendee list stops populating a little bit. Um, my name is Linda Kellum. I'm the uh, chair of the help, uh, a good or help. I'm in an accidental government information librarian webinar series committee. Um, I'm the committee chair. Uh, so uh, thank you for coming. Okay, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for everybody for coming. Um, I hope you are having a wonderful Monday. Um, so this is the Help, I'm an Accidental Government Information Librarian webinar series brought to you by the ALA Government Documents Roundtable. Um, and we are very excited for our webinar today. Um, we do have, uh, we're taking our usual hiatus in June and July. Um, in June, we will have our ALA Government Documents Roundtable meetings from June 13th to 17th. Um, and then during ALA, if you are actually going to the ALA conference in person, we will have some sessions there. Um, some really cool sessions, actually. It's like, and it's, and it's our 50th anniversary. Um, so we will have uh, a party. So you should come to our party um, for our 50th anniversary. Um, the help, we, the committee will have a meeting on June 17th. Um, at 2 p.m. Central, um, it's on Zoom. So if you are interested in the work of the HELP Committee or the work of the HELP Webinar Series, please come to the committee, that would be great. We'd love to see you all there. Um, part of that's gonna be talking about things we would like to do for webinars for the coming year. Um, and unfortunately, Larry uh, Larry is our um, incoming chair of the committee and he is sick today. So unfortunately, um, he cannot be with us, but I'm here, so yay. Um, so be too, uh, stay tuned for our upcoming webinars for the next year. We're really excited about some of the ones we have in the works. Um, you can see more of our webinars on our YouTube channel, which I'll put, I'll put in chat in a second. And today's webinar is on, uh, called Finding Gov Canadian Government Policy and its Analysis. And our speaker today is Helene LeBlanc. Helene has been an academic government information librarian for over 25 years and a Canadian federal government librarian before that. She is currently the government information and political science librarian at Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And she's done sab sabbaticals at the Foreign Affairs and International Trade Library in Ottawa, the European Commission Library in Brussels, and at the Library of Congress in the European Reading Room in Washington, DC. Thank you very much, Helen, for webinar. And we'll go ahead and switch over. Thank you very much. And I'll share my screen now. Great. So I have quite a lot, probably too much to say today. Um, first of all, I guess I'll have to tell you that I'm really hoping that um, it is my American colleagues on here. <laughs> because I dare say if I have any Canadian colleagues on our, on our call today, um, they know all this for sure. Um, the other thing is I focused on the accidental part of the accidental library and piece. So I am speaking somewhat to an audience that I don't know, I really don't know as far as government information librarians or yeah, people with this interest, if um, w what your experience is with government information, if it's really expertise, and I'm presuming there's a lot of expertise here too, but I did focus on um, trying to make it fairly basic for people that may have not gone into this aspect of government information. So, yes, this is me. And I, uh, my, my emails at the end, I will probably go over the allotted time. So if I don't finish my presentation, um, please do contact me if you, if you have any uh, questions or, or you just wanted to catch um, another one of those sources I might've been talking about. 
So today, it's pretty ambitious, but I'd like to make sure I touch on at least these five points. Um, some basic points about public policy, which would just be those things as a librarian. Um, I'm, I'm not that I'm not a reason, um, I'm not a professor and I don't write books on on um, as a, as an expert in, in public policy. <clears throat> but these are some of the things I've found along the way more like tripped over um, when I'm trying to look for public policy and they're pretty basic again, um, I tried to keep them that way in case you haven't really done this type of searching. Um, then I'll, I'll just touch on some of the background information and current events sources that I am heavily reliant upon. Um, government information and policy in general. Again, these are just some of the, the examples from the Canadian context. Um, and then again, uh, within that, um, some some examples. You'll see a lot of screenshots today. I apologize. My uh, my internet connectivity is very floozy through through um, well, first of all through PowerPoint and then Zoom. It just doesn't work well on my computer. So I've had to rely a lot on these. Um, shots so that my computer doesn't die in the middle of presentation and then again the last piece is touching on the analysis of government and its policy so in my world as an academic librarian um and i'm sure that any academic librarian would tell you that there's one thing about finding um finding a source or in that in this case government policy but the flip side of course in, in a lot of uh, um academic pursuits is is getting into not just the source but but why right so that's that whole analysis piece there are tons and tons and tons of definitions out there on the web in books and journals um, so i'm just going to pick a very simplistic one and one of those things is just understanding a bit about government policy is being this collective of what i I like that phrase authoritative decisional output so that collective of all the rules and programs services all the things created to address a particular issue in a system. The problem I find is this day and age we are encountering, of course, on the Internet, when you come to a government site or if you're just doing a search. Um, millions of hits right millions of hits for many people across the world trying to find a government policy piece. And so a lot of the times, again, students that come to me, I'm not quite sure, have I have I got a page here that talks about policy? Is this the policy right here? So one of those things I just wanted to touch on is, is often these days when you're on the websites, it's as basic for us is looking at perhaps the language. We may not be able to find um, a website or document that is so in our face that this is what this is a policy piece, but this language I just wanted to, to emphasize a lot of times those positive language words words such as framework initiatives. Um, service program all those sort of actual tangible guidelines these help us know that this is a policy small p policy so. Again, the other words that are great are those positive uh, verbs like promoting and growing and putting in place new, 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 you know, pr pr promoting new things that are coming. So in some ways, as again, when you're approaching a website, it's just to realize the language if it's informing you that if it's not the actual policy document, it's telling me something um, very important about policy. And government policy can be often, we talk about all this stuff that's written down, but often it is the inactions, it's the stuff that's not written down. So again, in my world, academics often want to look at those two things, the actual tangible in the sense of the information that they can find, that the real bare bones, this is what the policy is, but what are governments not doing to address an, um, an issue? So some people like to follow the policy in the sense of finding the data. So this day, actually, I wrote this before. <laughs> I use this example many, many um, for for many years, actually. So way before whatever is going on um, down in, of course, D.C. right now, in front of the Senate, um, no, Senate, excuse me, the Supreme Court. But also, it's it's beginning to be discussed here too. Um, you know, trying to reopen an issue, of course. But so we may have a political party that says, for example, that a woman's choice for abortion is her right, because it, perhaps it's in law. But what do our actual governments do to help this policy go through? 
So sometimes studying government policy might be simply not simply it's part of it is is researching the data so how many clinics are out there or how far away do women live from the clinics there's a there was a popular uh, program many many years ago in on in our province but it's not new of course and that's the idea of of for example of uh, sending children well children get sent to school but giving them um, breakfast in the morning to, to, to of course help the learning process so a government may be very quick and um, easy to say, oh my goodness, we totally support this policy. We're all for it. But when you start digging in perhaps to the financial data, so how much money was actually spent this year on these programs or how many schools have these programs or getting the money to have these programs. So sometimes this can tell us a lot about the actions or inactions. Basically, is this a policy for this government or not? Another point I wanted to say is um, how do we actually find it like when we're researching it so i've found there's there's two ways and you're not really going to do one or the other it's usually a mix of both so one of them is just simply researching what are the stated things in printer by mouth that a government says they're going to do to deal with an issue. So it's one thing, of course, to say something, um, it's quite another thing to do it. So often researchers will need this idea of the chronological, the actual factual things that were done. And we can find those things, of course, in media. We can find those things uh, following in Canada, the, the debates, for example, what were actually said, but actually you know, noted that we did this. But usually it's, these, it's the combination of the two things. And definitely that first point, Users, this is what we're going to do. We can definitely find that in the debates. So both sides of that coin usually are what are looked at when we're trying to research our government policy question. Another point I wanted to say is um, sometimes it's really hard, depending on the jurisdiction we're looking for, to find the policy. What is the policy, much less a policy document? Um, so often we'll have to think about, well, the hierarchical structure of our jurisdictions. This is the same for all sorts of, well, all around the world, of course. So if you are looking for, for example, in our country, a provincial policy, I'll just use um, Ontario. So if Ontario, you have a sense they've got a policy, what are they doing, but you can't seem to get your, your hands on much, you know, but when you start digging around, you realize pretty quickly, perhaps this policy is being pushed down by mandates from our federal government. And so if the, the federal government is expecting something or, or they're sort of the bigger umbrella um, overseer of the issue, we might step up to that level, see what the policy is, what we can find on it. And within that and everything that's produced by the federal government, they may actually talk about what the individual provinces are doing. Likewise, it's down to the to, down to the municipal or regional level. If they're battling with something um, that they're trying to deal with, we just have to not just, but often we can step up to the province or the territory to see well what is that policy statements. What type of things can we find about this topic in that level of policy? And within those, we can either um, gather what regions and municipalities have to do with this policy, or they actually refer to individual actual geographic places. So when we're looking at something like poverty reduction, as I said, there, there's all these levels I'd like to think about what are we doing in these different levels in Canada, policy wise, but I'd also want to look at the on the federal level, we can often get these ideas and that's what governments do too. There's a lot of, of reinventing of wheels, but there's a lot of trying to save that extra time and so they will study what other peer-to-peer -peer, you could call them countries are doing such as the us or the uk or australia um, we look at what these other places are doing to address the same issue so we might borrow their policy because it's great we might study their policy well how's that going for you 
The other aspect that we we all know about, I'm sure, in this in this um, in this talk today, of course, are international government organizations and of their influence on countries and what they're going to do. So often we will have to be at a t if we are part of a member a member nation of part of a group, um, an international government organization group, we have certain things we are committed to and um, we have to follow in the sense of policy kind of directions so that when we look at these international government organizations what are the kind of the rules to sit at that table and that can direct our policy um, decisions and our formulations too within um, within canada so there, there are so many examples out there i just wanted whoops sorry i just wanted to show you here was one example of the federal government looking at the ontario government's um, basic income model to get ideas so so again they borrow ideas they look for ideas we have we have an international government organization that looks at canada or looked at canada and was making a, um, an observation about how our african uh, canadians were being uh, treated basically and from these outside looking in uh, documents they may not actually state the policy what what you what you are doing but they often do say the current jurisdiction is doing this this and that but of course some recommendations to make things better might be added to these outsiders looking in so that helps us too to get an idea of what our policy is another point i wanted to make is policy can is often laid out in a variety of what you'll see that word i keep doing these stupid air quotes sorry instruments and often needs to be compiled from a number of resources so this is from the correctional service of canada as an example and on this list even though there's different names here directives there's a policy bulletin but standards a document that talks about the roles and responsibilities guidelines I think you get it. There's a lot of different, they're all different. They all have a slightly different, they're all slightly different in some ways, many very different in others, but they all have that same guiding thing together. They're stating what the policy is on a topic. But the other side of it, this is just again, an example shot from the Correctional Service of Canada. You can get, I'm not expecting to see all the, the little detail of the print. This is a flow chart though. So we had a policy trigger right down to the policy instrument being created. And it was just to give you a sense that complexity and the detailed interconnectedness of all the steps. So again, depending if you are helping somebody research policy, it's one thing to be aware of the different documents and, and we collect them all together and maybe have a read, but you may have researchers that need to also understand how did that policy come about by formulation something that tells them a protocol a policy on policies and there's literally something i once found a policy on policy creation um so that 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 might be an angle of the study too it gets very um difficult very fast so again gauging on that researcher you may not want to be going down this route at all but it's good to know that that sometime is a need for our researchers and the last little point here is the word policy with a capital P is so rarely used, at least in the titles of documents. So as noted here, sometimes what we're looking at is staring us right in the face, but because capital P, capital P policy isn't in the title, we didn't even know it. All right, so moving on, um, the next part of my little talk was just to talk to and to remind, especially the American audience, um, to be aware of some of the new sources I've used. I, I am working in an academic library, so I I'm, I'm, have the privilege of working with many subscription databases. Um, at least in the Canadian context, I know more and more of these are available through our public libraries, so it might be a balance that way. And of course, anybody across the globe could have different um, subscriptions to other things. So the ones I like uh, to use a lot for policy research would be ProQuest's Canadian Business and Current Affairs and the Canadian News Stream. And um, there's a couple of other products from them here with our key or, or large um, newspapers. Um, my colleagues out West Coast, for example, might have a, a subscription, of course, to the Vancouver Sun that sits on its own. So everybody's got access to something, we hope, in Canada at least. But there's other databases too. 
too, which also uh, furnish us a lot of information about the Canadian media context. So I use those a lot. When I am searching, I just wanted to point out um, for that jurisdictional level, I often use it as a subject. I, I don't want to get it bogged down to a keyword anywhere because, of course, a lot of these, especially Toronto Star, if I was looking for something about Toronto policy from the city, um, I don't want the three million hits that are going to come back just because Toronto is in, in the name of the publication. So I will use that as a subject or in the title headline P. Uh, lead paragraph. This may be very obvious to you, but it's it's to keep in mind, um, sometimes we just forget to tweak that and, and we come back with a lot of false hits. And then finally, the different words that I've used, uh, this is just a smattering um, of the collection, but these are the basic ones that we throw out into our searches and, and pull back in because they all kind of net or snag those results that, are, that do end up talking about policy in one way or another. The last few words, of course, you'll see on, on that little cluster are the law or legal side. So you may or may not want to be going down that rabbit hole with a policy topic. However, just keep in mind they can pull in results again, simply about media story searching. Um, but those words like legislated and regulated um, can also be these, these verbs that are used, as you know, by many as a way of just saying the government made us make this policy. And there's not much talk about the legal ramifications or the lawmaking behind it. So, so just so they can be a common parlance word almost, those two words. So I often will throw those in there too. In Canada, um, if you don't, especially if you don't have um, access to subscription databases, definitely media websites, uh, just put two up there, for example. Um, cbc.ca is one that I find really easy um, and nice to search. There's ctv.ca. There's, there's several out there. So that when you are doing a search, I'm heavily reliant on um, advanced Google. Don't know if you use it or not a lot, but um, when you do open it, you've got an ability to make the or search, of course, in the phrase a year ago, a year ago. And then you just choose the little root of cbc.ca. And in this way, I will get back many um, hits that are current and that I begin to start seeing indicators of things that government is doing, if not outright policy. It's going to point me towards what a policy is. And in case you haven't used this before, once you've done that search, then you can go back up to past year, choose a custom range, especially if it's really important for you to get back to another kind of section at a time. Again, this is just a, one of my tips that I like to, to show people um, that you can tweak these advanced Google searches. I'm not a sophisticated Google searcher, as you can probably tell, but um, it's just one, one of those tools that I have to try to round up background information on policy. And many of us, doesn't matter what jurisdiction we come from in this world, um, know that if we have a government online, most likely it is divided up with all sorts of information. I tend to go to the departments and agencies link straight up or ministries link. So what I do is I like to find them, for example, on the federal um, website. I'm just giving you this screenshot because unfortunately you do have to, I mean, there's lots on there, it's pretty, but we have to remember, of course, uh, websites are are primarily made for the public, right? For the public they're serving. So they have to be all things for all people. And, and on an academic end of things, sometimes it's just so basic, it doesn't help us. It doesn't help us when we're trying to get into the nitty gritty. So as we all know, we have to burrow down a lot. So the actual department and agencies, I just wanted to show you, you would have to sort of scroll down to find them. I mean, you can find lots of information on a policy topic in anywhere on this starting page, but it's one thing I'll just straight up go to because often I just want to know what is um, what is going on. And when I do open them up, this is just a freeze frame of, the, for example, when I took this shot of the federal government, there was 204 uh, eight, uh, departments, for example. Um, there are now over 206 so so they grow they grow where they could lessen and I like to do this on a regular basis this is what I mean like the numbers can grow and they can lessen they can they can be there but they've changed their name um, and of course they can amalgamate together or just disappear 
Um, the Ontario government, for example, at the time I took this picture, it was 24 ministries and of course a region, but again, the departments. So I like to be aware, I like to, that's one of my tips to myself at least, is to see what uh, ministries and agencies, boards, commissions, departments have been set up to address different issues. And when I do that, whoops, sorry, excuse me. I, I keep a couple of things in mind. And again, I apologize if you do this all the time, but I'm always thinking of not just one agency. I'm always thinking who, who does what, but who has a stake in this game, right? So, and then when I do think of that, I sort of make a shopping list. And I like to do that because I like to search them separately. So in my example here with homelessness and housing, there's a variety, this, this is not the finite list by far, but these were top five ones, for example, that, that, um, that I could find that dealt with this topic. So, and there's others. So another point, if, if of course you don't know this already, here's some of my strategies I, I just going to suggest if you're not doing them already, and I'd love to hear others because this is again just what I've sort of stumbled on over the years. When I am, when I do pick and choose a particular departmental website to search, when I will look around and I will look for those key links for publications, news, media, A to Z index, if you happen to have it. And, and of course, more and more, we're going to see these word policy and policies, and that's a, that can be a problem. And the reason it can be a problem, they're great, click away, explore. What I've discovered, and it's been the hard way, of course, is that they're often not complete, much less up to date, and the URLs could be dead. And, and why is this, we might ask ourselves? Well, one thing to remember is, let's call this young woman here, Janet. And say Janet is actually the person who creates the content um, for a website, for a particular department. And while Janet's doing all that, she she happens to either know she's been given or she's found them herself as some public servant um, for some department, and she pulls them into her page. Oh yeah, these all look good. They're all to do with the policy of my department. I'm shoving them in there. And then of course, Janet um, has built the content, but there may be someone else, another team actually building the structure of the websites. So we often, and this is this happens a lot, there, there's a, maybe not a miscommunication, but lack of communication perhaps. So Janet may have said, hey team, put this up on the website, but maybe Janet said that in 2019 and no one's checked Janet's work since. No, and perhaps um, more, she missed some policy, she didn't know, she didn't know, but there's others out here. She didn't know it was replaced that policy it had to come down. Sometimes, as we all know, things disappear off the web on an, on an oops factor. So someone took it down. I've definitely heard that from government um, bodies where they say, well, we took it down because it was last year, who cares? So it's like, oh my gosh, we care, of course. In the academic world, we wanna do that historical perspective. So people might take it down because they think it's not timely. Um, and of course we have the on, on um, on purpose factor, if you want to be cynical or a conspiracy theorist, you know, maybe the government doesn't want you to see that. So came down. So, so we don't know why things necessarily disappeared off the web. All we should keep in mind is that good chance it is not complete. And so what do we do with that? Well, one way to make it a robust catch when you're doing the search is is not to forget believe it or not that of course we've got our 1-800 lines and we have email um, inquiry and I'm, I'm pushing this here again and again you might think this is obvious but a lot of our researchers don't think it's obvious they, they they just don't and in fact in my world i have a lot of undergrad students that first of all they think probably it's a lot of work perhaps but i, I think they're intimidated by the idea of that they're intimidated by even telling anybody they 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 don't know um, or even to ask for just simply help. I think I've got all this, does it look good? Um, and, and a lot of them actually feel that somehow it's cheating. There's my air quotes again, it's cheating. So is it cheating to ask for help that you haven't actually found directly? And of course it isn't, but so again, it's all there that I, I will reach out and I'm sure we all have. And it's amazing. It's amazing how disappointing it's been. <laughs> you know, I may not get an answer at all, or I may not get an answer in a timely fashion, 
or it's, it's just so lackluster what I get back. But other times equally, just amazing amount of information back that I could never find online. And of course, that's to remind us that there's a lot of things that of course aren't online. So we either cannot find it because it has never been put up there, back to Janet, she never had that content added to her page. Um, but there's, of course, as we know, if we think of government information as a huge iceberg, the top above the water is usually what I'd say most people will find. The stuff under the surface, the biggest part, is so full of nooks and crannies, of course. So and it could be as, as convoluted as, as databases within databases. So if, if a web crawler can't reach those particularly, you have to know that they actually exist. So asking for help from our governments, keep that in mind. And of course, we've always got the advanced Google search up our sleeve. So this is an example I'll show you. .gc.ca is the root for the Canadian government. If you weren't aware, this is a search for multicultural policies. Away I went. What my, This is another tip I have for you, if you don't already do it. When I bring back results, then I start to look. I, I don't get into the weeds very often for the first two pages of results, I like to keep my eye on the level of the URL. And I like to see, well, what department is actually putting out this material? So I get a lot of um, frequent frequent flyers or repeat offenders, you might want to call them, of these departments that, that Google has, of course, with their, um, with their algorithmic launch of their the results have somehow warranted one way or the other they're going to be displayed this way. That's another issue altogether of what Google's presenting us. However, over and over, I'll begin to see the sort of top, top notch, top numbers of these particular departmental URLs. And one of them, for example, we have the um, Commissioner of Official Languages is here. We have um, the Prime Minister's Office, that's the top one. We have Stats Canada, our, 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 our statistical, National Statistical Agency. We have the Canadian Radio Television Communications um, Agency here, something's there. And we have something, for example, from what we call Canadian Heritage. So if I do do this, trying to get back to my little screen here, um, if I find something that I like, oh, that looks very interesting because I keep seeing a lot of good looking hits. This is where I'll tighten up my search. So I go back to Google, the advanced search, and now I'm going to take that URL and make it right on point for that department. Then I run the search again, and this is when I start coming up in this example with lots of good looking hits that are gonna darn well tell me a lot about policy, if not a policy directly. So that's just another idea I have about uh, using advanced Google. The next several screens will be giving you just again some chit chat about key information products out of our governments. Uh, there's so many like, that are exactly, they can map out exactly, you can find the same thing in the US, UK, other, other domains. Um, but I'll just sort of show you where they are in the Canadian context, the federal government. So one of those, and, and they're my top kind of go-tos when I am doing my beginning policy search. The first one to make it easy on myself perhaps is going straight to the news, the news, but coming from the government. And that's again on the main page, scroll down, you'll find it actually on news. That makes sense. When you open up, you do have a variety of different types of news products. They all do something slightly different. The, the search interface, even though there's an advanced search there, I hate it. So if there are other Canadian colleagues on here, they may have a way better way of searching it um, or be way more sophisticated with me, but I absolutely have a hell of a time trying to do any sort of controlled search with, with that site. Anyhow, so it does make it worth it though when I can find a news release um, that's on my topic because especially if it's timely, of course, and we know news releases are succinct, they give us a lot of facts, they give us a lot of um, what I like to call proper nouns. So people are named, reports are named, I can take those things and go further with the research, of course. And in these cases, in the federal government of Canada, they like to give us some quotes, I can take it or leave it those quotes, but I do like to know who's being quoted so often it's our ministers, but sometimes we'll actually get non government organization actors in here being quoted 
which helps because that tells me where to go outside of the government to get opinions on my anal on my it's the analysis piece on government infra um, policy and of course quick facts here and then way at the bottom they have things called related products perhaps associated links so again these are links into actual perhaps policy documents again keeping in mind they're not complete someone's just picked and chosen them to launch um, to be linked to from a news release but there's a contacts and i love that part because that again gives us that it, that, that information someone else to contact to make sure if i really got it all so it's something to keep in mind that the news um, sources can give us those primary contacts the second thing, of course, and these are the, the million or billion out there are the actual unique reports or websites that are built at the time or written at the time of an actual event or a policy that that's being looked at. We have royal commissions in Canada and, of course, there's commissions of inquiry and these tend to be um, just to be blunt about it or as we talk about in my classes they're not happy usually not happy events at all so i think we all know that about about commissions of inquiry that usually something pivotally bad has happened and um hence a commission is struck to look at it to learn from it but they are awfully they can be awfully huge like the, the end result of published material they take a, an enormous amount of time for many of them they can be very expensive and a, and, a, and a lot of people come together to make them happen because experts are being asked to come forward um, and, and give their testimonials and everything else, their research um, time and depth into, into the actual issue at hand. But if you do have one, uh, one of these, these sort of reports, any of these reports that are structured or the online websites, you can open them up, of course, and you'll find oodles out there. These are just three or four that I have here, the Ontario government, Halifax, Royal Commission of Aboriginal Peoples. And this is something from OECD looking in at Canada, but of course on a topic. And in any of these topics, when you open up the actual report, you start looking around for the key word of policy or policies, and you can pretty well quickly find um, a report has a lot. So using this way in, it's probably very obvious to you, this is one way to find about, out about policy. And of course, often the reports will have the footnotes, the references, the bibliography to our primary, primary sources, and you can go there and grab that, what they're calling the actual policy. We have, of course, a parliament in Canada. Um, House of Commons and Senate. So parl.ca, just in case you didn't know, um, we have the debates, or some people will call them, of course, Hansard, because that's the other name. Um, and then we have committee proceedings and reports there. So within the actual legislative committees, we have um, all the, the minutes and proceedings. So that's what the verbiage of what was said. And we have reports that are generated from the study of the topic at hand. And within those reports, we have what we call witnesses. So that's the testimonials of experts coming forward, talking about the topic and submitting perhaps a, a report or presentation. These inform our policies and, and they definitely talk about what the policy is at hand within these departmental, uh, sorry, within these committee reports, depending on the topic that you're studying. So in any given um, standing committee report, for example, you can find recommendations and usually an appendix at the back, there'll be the list of witnesses. And I like those because those names are further names. They can be academics, other government people, non-government organizations who have submitted. So I'll go to their websites or I'll go to their body of work to find out more about my topic. And again, if we start talk, looking through it, we can easily find examples of policy. If you haven't been to our website in Canada for the Parliament of Canada, it looks like this, a lot of um, quick shots here. Um, it's because the Senate and the House of Commons are two separate kind of ways we're going to go, but they're not designed the same, and that bugs me. But if we click on committees for the Senate of Canada, for example, you'll be able to find all sorts of committees. I just highlighted this one, for example, as one with that NATO um, example document. So, for example, in the Senate, there might very well be um, a committee set up structured along that topic area that I'm interested in. And in um, the House of Commons, you would go under the parliamentary business. So when you click on parliamentary business, that's where you'll see our list of committees from the House of Commons. And again, there's studies and reports. You can go in different ways. And again, this is just the list of the current 
House of Commons committees, of which I think four, four of them have been sort of highlighted as ones that would probably be interested in NATO or topics around that are falling out of NATO, including our policy implications and decisions. So again, helping to go into those A to Z kind of soup to nuts subject orders of the different committees, both for the House of Commons and the Senate, you might find more information about policy in Canada. Our legislative libraries are, in my opinion, heroes. Um, we have many, of course, around the world, not many, but you know, there are several around the world. Of course, in, the, um, in Canada, we do have a Library of Parliament. They do put out research publications. When you do go to that site, you'll see that there are several. Sometimes they're not as up to date as you wish, but they are working. They're working away producing these things. Um, and you, you, I'll just leave it at that. You can certainly go and explore it. When you do open one up, for example, here's one on, again, homelessness. They usually are short and sweet if you've never looked at these things. They summarize what's going on in Canada. They summarize what the government is doing at, um, currently, the issues. And of course, within it, this is just one blow up of one of the pages, we get what I said uh, to you before, we get named uh, proper nouns. So that's what I really, really like. Again, directive, strategy, initiative, these are our policies, so that we can take those, quote them as a phrase, we can do it through Google if you want, you can put that back into Google and pull it back out, um, or find information around it. And again, we get the, the actual department in Canada, for example, if it's in a footnote here, but you know, key departments that are at play with these policies and exam lots and lots of examples of the non-government organizations that are responding to this policy, either saying we need a policy or we need to change this policy or we need to get rid of this policy. So you'll get all of those mishmashed into these types of documents if you haven't already explored them before. Um, and likewise, as, as we probably all know, the Congressional Research Service, of course, has their own research publications for the US side of things, but the European Parliament does too. It's called Think Tank. And I like actually on my Canadian policy topic, just to keep in mind, I like to look at my peer governments. So what's nice is, is often I can find if it's especially something Canada is involved in with it at an international level, I can find you know, a report about what we're doing, even though this is the US of A and the European Parliament for this topic, Canada is mentioned throughout. So, so that I can actually, it's, it's interesting to see what another government is thinking or looking in on us, on our policies. So they all round out really quite nicely. And of course they're short and easy to read and give us lots of ideas of where to go for further information. Legis Info is one of my top, I think everybody in, in um, the Canadian government information scene knows of the Library of Parliament's Legis Info. It's a database that's done by the Library of Parliament and it summarizes our legislation, the bills. And I think it goes back to 1995. So it, it, it's great, it sort of summarizes in one place, a particular bill and all its stages it went through, through both houses. It also includes background information. So it looks like this if you haven't seen it before. When you get into it, here's my bill on the medical assistance and dying. I can start opening it up, read the second readings, look at all of the debates, what was going on. And the second reading, of course, for many of us in our different countries, the second reading is where the, 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 uh, the nuts and bolts of what people think excuse me, what people think about um, a proposed piece of legislation. So this is where we're going to hear a lot of discussion or see a lot of discussion or read a lot of discussion, depending on your format of accessing the debates within the second for the second reading. So this is all included in Legis Info. It's very handy. When I do click on the about tab at the top here, it also gives us more information though too, I like. And so again, this goes back to that content like press releases, um, there's a bit of further reading, but any sort of perhaps there's other policy documents that they have nicely tied to, again, not complete, so, so don't think it is. Um, but the legislative summaries are here, again, another type of document, research document written by the Parliament, um, the Library of Parliament, and this is an example of one. And when I open it up, of course, it does take that in this case because it's a legislative summary, it takes it clause by clause 
changes, proposals, all that sort of thing. But the commentary is kind of neat. So commentary at the end often talks about the policy implications of a law coming through. So something to, to definitely explore. And we all know about annual reports coming out from many different government bodies. In Canada, we have two that that I kind I find federal that I just love the department the departmental performance reports actually is like what I said like a, or departmental results reports they changed their name but never quite enough so we all get mixed up what they're called but it's basically what I call a report card of the last year so it does the typical annual report that tells us what they've done full of information about policy full of statistics of financial information sometimes pretty charts and graphs and pictures the plans and priorities or departmental plans, again, depending on what, what era you're looking in because they changed their title, but that basically means this is the plans for the coming year. And that's kind of neat too, because it talks about what they hope to do policy-wise. There's lots of departmental annual reports out there, depending on the level of government. And of course, you can do an advanced Google search to try to find an annual report from an Ontario government body. Yeah, this, um, this is just to sort of show you where to find them because they are really hellish to try to find if you don't know about them again on that main government of Canada page and do by all means explore the page go down to the bottom the government wide reporting when you click on that you're going to choose plan government spending. And there on that page you'll find departmental plans by listed by the departmental name. So again, it's just a screenshot. I was looking for indigenous, um, anybody looking after indigenous, and this sort of shows you, um, you know, just some of them we have, I think there were three or four in there. But anyhow, when you open one up, it tells us this is the plan for the coming year. This is already a bit dated, shows us the, the plan though. When I open that up and I start looking for policy, you get a rack load. Okay, so it's really these really, really uh, pinpoint what our government is doing policy wise on these topics by subject. Number seven, official information directives. These are quite new for us to be able to get our hands on in Canada. Um, new in the last couple of years, uh, the mandate letters are one. I just found a, um, we had a government information day in British Columbia on Friday, and I thought, wow, it's fascinating. Somebody mentioned uh, one of the speakers that we really had to be aware, though, that these mandate letters or any of this stuff that's becoming more and more open, um, I never even thought of this, but how sanitized it could become, too. So if a government knows they have to share these previously cloistered um, information vehicles to this is in this case mandate letters to prime minister telling you know the walking orders what his ministers or her ministers are going to do um, for each of their departments and that was clandestine information before now it's open it's very interesting that this could actually now be buffed up and they become sounding like motherhood statements so i thought that was very interesting like they rather they might take the edge off the nitty-gritty of what you might be able to find in these about um what our governments are doing or what our government is doing on a policy but we have question period notes too that tells helps guide the ministers in the house of commons of what they should or shouldn't say and we have an open government um, portal like many jurisdictions do now under open information you'll find briefing packages you can find this all wedged in different places within our open government pages it's just really hard to find them this comes off of the prime minister of canada's government website these are um or the official website these are the mandate letters for example just a screenshot and if you hadn't seen them before, when you open them up, for example, for the Minister of Immigration and Refugees and Citizenship, what they are supposed to be doing, which can be very interesting. This obviously helps us know what the policy will be set. If you go again down onto the main or onto the main Canadian government webpage, down to open government and data, this is where you will find very busy page there's just so much to, to click and every time you get used to where your cheese is laid out in the maze they're going to change the maze right you hope you can always find your cheese like it exists somewhere but has it been put in a fridge is it on a shelf now or it's been shoved under a table like these <laughs> moves around all the time but of course if we if you clicked on the open information here I shouldn't say of course you hope it looks like this you'll have an ability to get into their information portal 
And there you have a lot of other types, these briefing packages. So it just is endless, I know, and, and there's just more and more and more to be aware of or where you can find information about policy. But as I'm just trying to sort of give you guys um, an idea, there's, there's many I use in my classes and research support when I'm teaching. And of course, we have to change all the time. So it's like I have to refresh every couple of months, if not earlier, to be aware of like what else has been rolled out or what's been taken down, not taken down. It's kind of different convoluted route. But this is an example of, uh, of question period notes, again, suggesting what ministers should say. Um, I really like it this sort of thing if pressed what you should say if pressed so it can be interesting you know so these are opinions about the policy of what they have to do too financial reports are great um again follow the money follow the uh the data so to speak but we can find unique budgetary documents i know all all of our jurisdictions can about devoted to a topic so of course if this is what my policy research is going to be about indigenous people and what we're doing about you know repairing our relationships i want to look at that budget particularly to see what where the money is going to be put to help roll out these policy um, decisions public accounts of course very detailed can tell us what's been going on and my favorite is of course um, my favorite because it can be very juicy and it can be really um critical of course is the auditors general out there and they can tell us how things are doing well or not so that when we look at these things again if we do a search for the word policy we can find a lot in a tiny little report that indicates what the government's um, policy is and what they should be doing and how well they're doing it I just a couple of points in case you hadn't thought of this before um, when you are looking for or their last points when you are looking for government policy to be aware that our policies uh, government policy is, is often influenced by interest groups, so those could be the big corporate or special interest or lobby groups out there. Um, that will push a government obviously to make certain things go a certain way we do have a lobbyist registration site for in Canada federal if you want to see who's lobbying which part of our government, we can actually look that up. Um, and they have to be registered, but but we can also have that whole uh, lobbying thing in a sense, the smaller the grassroots of public opinion right so that. Um, that may very much sway our, our policy, um, or not our research, but sway our, the policy the way it goes. So governments, of course, is again, maybe a cynical view, but if they have to be voted in again, um, how much does that have an impact on, on the ability of public opinion to um, pressure from the public to make a policy get changed or to go a different way or to, to be dropped? Um, again, policy, opinion, um, analysis, whatever words you want to call it, these are sort of the four areas, just to refresh, I know you know this, but in the media, you know, instead of just factual articles about this, this and that, we often will rely on editorials or opinion or column pieces from journalists, tell us, you know, their, their analysis of policy, we have official government sources, of course, other government uh, jurisdictions writing reports they're reactionary or critical about a policy at hand of course our academic journals um and, and and books are out there in the especially in the the academic library context we can look at policy the history of it all sorts of things and then our activist think tank non-government not-for-profit opinions of the people <laughs> grassroots whatever you want to call that cluster at the end so that these can be um very informative even if they can be ill-informed or just really evil or wrong from the public i like to also be aware of that aspect of of the grassroots kind of thing for the gut re i say often to my students taking a pulse point right so what are some of the ways people are reacting to a proposed policy or what at play or or a lack of policy so again those are those four areas i really want to touch on of where i'd research to find analysis um the political parties point of view don't forget within the legis info you have the major speeches at second reading well if i do one more click on that screen i originally showed you i can actually get 
the, the, they've, they've divvied them out. The speech is based on the, the political party's point of view. Lovely, it's so informor, informative. So again, that's Legis Info. You certainly can check out the election and platform documents that are out there and political party documents. This is just an example from 2016 of a candidate that wanted to run for the leader of our, of our federal uh, con um, conservative party. And she was, she probably was not the first, but it, she certainly was grabbed by the media to say that she wanted to look at screening immigrants, refugees, and visitors for anti-Canadian values. And of course, it created a firestorm here. I don't know how much she was influenced by Mr. Trump, but there you go. There's that idea of you get an idea if they're not in power, what a leader would do, especially as far as policy goes. Or if a leader is in power and they want to be reelected. It's a great source too to see what they um, said they will do and they are doing perhaps other sources for background information not background information excuse me other sources for opinion that come from government are basically those parliament committees again you're going to look up perhaps the witnesses and their submissions you can see those online consulting with canadians i have a screenshot in a moment to show you but that, those are actual active um, exercises the federal government and other levels of government will go out and ask the public, hey, we're thinking about doing this, what do you think? We have, of course, the more traditional that have been around a couple of hundreds of years, especially in the US, uh, sorry, in the UK and Canada, green papers and white papers, and there's they're slight difference of um, raison d'etre between the two, but they also are getting at people's opinions. This is consulting with Canadians. It's a mess to try to find again, try to search it. I, this is half the time is a hell just trying to search these things. It's just so basic. But if you know they're there, you give a better chance of digging around and finding something perhaps. Again, a screenshot on the homelessness initiative. But it, 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 it's very interesting what we can find, people's opinions, um, reports, what we heard, this type of thing. Okay, and, and it'll talk about the policy at hand and then perhaps what we're going to do later. So all of that's consulting with Canadians. We have think tanks, of course, as I said, the grassroots and non-government organizations. McGill University maintains a nice list of Canadian think tanks. You're welcome to go there. Harvard has a list too that's internet and has international components. So Canada might be listed there that it's a lot of times they just start to reiterate each other. You can certainly do again an advanced Google search based on the URL of an institution, but always with think tanks um, or any of these organizations, read the about us. So you, you need to know what angle that these people are coming from. And um, again, a, a call out for statistics and data. Yay, who likes them? <laughs> A lot of people do, um, but finding the effects of government policy by looking at stats again, a little bit like following the data, following the numbers, looking for the financial information, the before and after state, really cool, but the non-government organizations, lots of them do the same sort of thing. Be aware, be aware of bias and inability to, to correctly gather information. We have... Um, Legal databases, of course, we have tons of blogs out there. Law blogs is one of my favorite for legal aspects of a topic in Canada. So lots of things to look through by, by topic. We have awards going on here for different, different blogs. So they can tell us everything too, that not everything, they can tell us a lot about opinions. In regards to the big cities, we have something called the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. And they have a very basic website, but when you get into it, you can actually find some very interesting reports. Again, referring to the way a policy is impacting them at a municipal level, be it a federal policy or a provincial policy. So very interesting um, resource. And that's me. So I was trying to hurry up to get under the one o'clock mark. I see my, my clock says it's 101. But um, yeah, I think that is, it for what I would have to say. I don't know if um, anyone's left because I can't see anything on Zoom here. So. <laughs> hey there, Helen. Thank you so much. Um, that was a really interesting presentation. I learned a lot about Canadian government resources, and it's it's interesting to see a lot of the techniques I use with finding um, U.S. information is very similar. So. Um, we don't have time for questions, but I want to thank you everyone for participating today. This um, recording will be 
um, posted on our YouTube channel and I popped that into the chat. And um, you can also just if you Google help, I'm an accidental government information library and we have a website that has upcoming presentations. So thanks again, Helene. Um, you can, um, I don't know if you want people to email you with questions or not, but yeah, so you can, we'll be able to see her emails on the presentation. So thanks everyone. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for your time. Have, have a good rest of the week, everybody.